welcome everyone and thank you so much for being here um let me know if we get the feed here which is we can see the screen and everything's good um and besides that i just want to make sure that we give a shout out to iSpring for facilitating this awesome um two days of getting together and sharing sharing uh many speakers and great experiences and learning so you know applause everybody there throwing emojis maybe let us know how happy you feel about it i feel super great about it and i'm great that i can share this friday afternoon with you so today we're going to talk about lms strategies to activate social learning and it's going to be a bit of a journey that we're going to take into uh, social learning itself um being that it is uh has some what of a theoretical pieces of it some some of that knowledge that we need to know that sh we should know and, and need to be mindful and I'll tell you a little bit about myself and you heard all the credentials and stuff like that. But really, you know, I started like everybody else, got into learning and development, training and facilitation, uh, helping people do their best and be able to achieve their best at companies. I started in the corporate setting after serving in the military and, uh, you know, couldn't, couldn't stop from there. And that led me into instructional design and eventually LMS administration. So my view of LMS administration is actually one of, of experience that I manage uh, other products, major corporate products for 40,000 individuals and corporations and had to deal with the various challenges you will face when you're managing a system for so many users. I mean, there are many groups, especially if the company is nationally dispersed. Now you have groups that, you know, reside in California and they are they have compliance requirements that are quite different than other places. So yeah, it's um, it it was a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful circle or wrap up experience that I had there. As you are um, commenting here, thank you everybody for saying hello and thank you for being here. I know you're tired, so and I know it's been a lot. So I know your brain right now is a little melty. You know, you got, you got the melts going on, but that's okay. You know, we're, we're getting there and. Uh, it's the afternoon and we'll have some fun as you are integrating here and you're commenting, start sharing for you what social learning means. Uh, give us a little bit of a, the, your thoughts on that. What is social learning to you? Uh, what actually does it mean to you? And uh, share those thoughts. I know there is a little bit of a delay because we're doing the YouTube live stuff. So I'll give you a few seconds to come around with that. And as we go along, I'll let you know about our journey coming up. So the plan here is to discuss social learning itself. We're going to get your comments here, hopefully from, uh, you know, what is it that you perceive to be social learning? And I'll give you a little bit of the findings that I have for it. We'll discuss a, a very helpful sort of framework or um, paradigm out there called the PRIME uh, acronym. And uh, that it comes from research in social, specifically for digital and social media. And uh, then the LMS strategies for that. And then hopefully, you know, we get to do a quick demo here and with iSpring Learn. So we have a great comment from Mary saying students collaborating with each other. Awesome. Interaction with other learners as they learn. Yeah, exactly. Learning from each other. I see your comments there. And as I say, we end up with a demo and I kind of show you some of the mechanisms that we have there that you can take advantage of uh, with iSpring Learn today. And obviously using iSpring Learn because the folks here have been really helpful and provided me with the environment to show you that and that you can uh, take advantage later on. Let's see other comments that we have. Peer-to-peer -peer learning, awesome, yeah. So, you know, social learning goes, goes back a long time. I think if you can think of, if you can think of, um, I mean, think about when fire was discovered, right? Like you probably was like two people hanging out or one hanging out, saw the fire. And then the other one went, hmm, <laughs> right? And then here we are today with the, with the amazing capabilities that we have. So social learning is about collaboration. Everybody mentioned it here quite a bit, but there is some elements, there are some elements in there in how that collaboration happens. So one is observation. Right. So regardless of whether you're looking at from the student perspective, being being that is academic or you're doing school type of work, or if you're doing workplace learning, there is observation and observation can happen 
can start individually and spread through the group, right? So meaning that you are observing the phenomena, you are, you are observing what's happening, and you are uh, you are paying attention, and that's becoming information that you can use in your learning. So in this little graph that you have here, uh, which is a which is a collaboration and uh, and and credit to uh, Dali or ChatGPT, you know, image creation. You have a little story of Jimmy and Tom that went together, running at the park, having fun. And here we notice that for whatever reason, the banana peel that I asked for happens to be part of the road, or it is so huge that it's bigger than Jimmy. But in this perspective, we notice that one kid falls, the other one continues to laugh and, you know, hangs out. But the reality here that you think about it, if we talk about it, observation and, and gathering things, is that as kids, you got two things happening here. And one is the experience that Jamie is having with the kid that fell and Tommy is having, which he might be laughing because he's having such a great time, or he might be laughing because it's funny that Jimmy fell. Who knows? But the association that we can that can be made here is that the banana peel is the source of the fall. Right. So there is a little bit of learning. Next time they see a banana peel, what do you think the behavior will be? So that's something to think about. We got a great comment from Raymond says, I think social learning can be as formal as a group core or collaborative training down to seeing and observing others and picking tips and tricks for improvement. Awesome stuff. Thank you for sharing that. So observation is critical. Uh, that's one thing. And that could be observation again from the individual perspective and seeing what others are doing. And then we have imitation and copying. Okay, so in imitation and copying, there is uh, this iconic image you see here is artwork. And uh, is a Comanche woman from uh, the artist uh, Eric Tipiconic. And this is out in the Bullock Museum. I uh, recently took this uh, shot, the screenshot. But the, this is a Comanche woman. So if you know uh, our history in the United States, uh, Native Americans, there was the use of the rifle by the strides, right? But that was not inherent to them. So it became an element of social learning, if you think of it, because there's a new concept introduced. There is a need that needs to be uh, met. And the social right, the rifle became a tool that was a critical tool to survive a new technology, right? So they were fighting the specific forces. There was a mismatch in technology and ability. So they realized that that was part of that. Now, if you go check the history, you also know that they didn't just replace everything with the rifle. And as a matter of fact, there wasn't a lot of fighting with the rifle on horseback, but they did use the rifle when they had to um, help and protect their campsites. And that is because the utility and the ability to learn together. So, I mean, you can only imagine what this is like because it's a, it's a very, it's a very interesting thing. It's like, if you've never seen this, the first time you've ever seen something like this, you're seeing an object you never knew. Now I introduce a whole different way of you looking at things. And this then spreads from learner to learner, right? From one person to another person to another person. You can compare this to the workplace learning and it's the same situation. So that's how you get progress. So imitation and copying is not so much, is part of observation. You go and observe things and then you try to emulate those actions. And then on your own personal experience, you start improving on those. Okay, so let's go back to workplace learning then. So what happens a lot in workplace learning? We've seen great activities, right? Where you get together, you share expertise. What do you call this? Share experiences, right? You get the group work. We've seen it in your comments. You say peer-to-peer, hey, -peer, working together. Exactly. And that is because now you're combining the knowledge the learning and the experience of many different people with many different abilities, with many different backgrounds, and each person is enriching one or the other. This is not about one person knows way more than the other or not, because a person that has a lot of expertise can still learn from someone that has 
less expertise simply because, you know, we all have different lives and different journeys. So that's the beauty here of socially learning. So Albert Vandora is, you know, credited pretty much with a lot of the work of social learning. I mean, one of the experiments that he did, he put a bunch of kids together in a room and there was a, uh, sort of like a doll or something labeled bad or, you know, something to be done. And it was observed. And one of the kids started just punching the thing. And then everybody else started punching the thing. So, I mean, you see where, <laughs> where, where there's influence in observation and there's influence in what we uh, see as people learn different behaviors. And I mean, if you look around, you also see that there are many factors there that kind of align and correlate to what we do. So uh, we have some comments there uh, from Amber, uh, different perspectives. And then Raymond says, uh, this is also why it's so important for leaders to model behavior. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? Now that you say that, Raymond, uh, it must be like you you probably read this. This is the first time I ever presented this, but you are like picking this up, man. <laughs> so we have modeling. So yes. Modeling then is another element of social learning. So just to recap with you, right? And if you are paying attention, you're really liking the stuff, we're in common, let me know. What was the first thing? Was it observation? Maybe was it imitation? What was it? And modeling. And now we get into modeling. And modeling is now what really applies more from the designer point of view, from the teacher point of view, meaning that you are exhibiting the right way or the optimal way and that provides a pathway for your learner student or anybody that needs to learn to follow that path right so this is uh critical modeling is a great thing so when it comes to social learning in enterprise environments and especially using digital learning in other words digital mechanisms and tech i.e your lms or your chat um, and whatnot, you're going to have to model that behavior. You're going to have to get a group together, get some people behind you, some champions, right? And have those people constantly exhibit that behavior so others then can emulate. So social learning in our company, says Kate, um, it's a schedule, virtual roundtable discussion. Awesome. On a topic, participants choose to organically, organically in the moment. Oh, well, that's very interesting. That's nice. And also, it doesn't feel that formal. It doesn't feel that uh, constrained. So that's pretty awesome. Like that. Uh, all right. So we are here then to talk about how do we socially learn in terms of the framework that I was discussing, which is the prime framework. So um, Brady et al., and that means, you know, Brady and friends, or I should call them the Brady Bunch, maybe. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a dad, so I got dad jokes. So Brady, uh, the scientists that looked, they did some research, and they looked at the algorithms and the interactions in social media and the learning aspects of that, or what really drives people to follow and do social interactions. So... They come up with this, uh, they found out doing a literary, literary review, meaning looking at all the science and research out there, they found that in this specific, specific environment, which is digital, you want to, you'll see four different reasons why people really engage in social learning, in social interactions. And that is prestigious, meaning that you're following the person. Again, we'll go back to modeling. You're following someone that is influential in a specific interest that you have and that you see all the time. That's why you follow some people on LinkedIn. That's why you follow people in different places here on YouTube. So you're interested in what they're doing. You want to learn more about what they're doing and you'll find this quite a bit. So in your workplace learning, you should be looking at those things. Then we have um, in group and that, that is the connection piece that we're talking about. Groups with, with similar interests, they are sharing this knowledge. The moral component, the M in prime, is that you also want to follow some ethical or moral compass in that, in that, in the, so in your workplace learning, there could be maybe groups that are research groups for climate change, or how can the company do things better here and there? And when it comes to learning, how can your teams do things better? And emotionally, obviously we can never take that out. Emotional is a 
probably a huge part of what we learned, the beginning of things, right? So we get, um, that's what drives interest and drive and everything else. So in terms of looking at, a, they looked at social media, you see this different things like academia, you'll have prestige and people that are professors and whatnot, or known, well-known researchers in group, you know, different tendencies of whether they're polit politicians or not, or the politics, moralized and emotional. And the algorithms will tend to amplify that. And, you know, in this world, your LMSs are now getting um, algorithms-based, AI-based uh, infusions. So that helps out with what it is. But, you know, since it's all text, it could also be there could be social mis misperceptions. And that's why it's good as your groups are formed that you have that clear communication and you have that. So when we look at LMS strategies, now, right, we know the social learning, if you think about it, we talked about observation, we talked about imitation and copying and modeling. Those are the four tenets. You can follow the framework in the digital component. And what can you do with your LMS really to get this going? So you can start communities of practice. So th those are groups that have common resources. You have experts in those groups and those groups then further the cost of knowledge and further the cost of learning in specific topics, sharing that expertise. Because not everything is going to be or has to be containing courses. You can use social tech, right? Your Microsoft, your all different chat environments that you have. If it's well organized, you can use that. But guess what? LMS has now provide that capability where you can actually interact directly with your instructors and about a course, about content in a course. And you can use chats and knowledge sharing. And so if you think about it, I will call that to be the your modeling, imitation, and copy. So if you're already, um, you know, a small to medium business group, I mean, anybody can do this, no matter what size they are. But if you're small to medium, the LMS can play way more a role of what you're perceptually thinking of in the beginning traditionally, which is, oh, yeah, that's where I take my courses. Uh, course, 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 course. They could actually be a place where things are like, and the good thing about the LMS from this perspective is that it provides a log of those interactions. So what does that do in terms of intelligence from the LMS, from the learning leader side? You can report on the things that are being said and done. So that is it in terms of what the content is based. I'm going to give you a quick demo on iSpring Learn of what those elements are and what that may look like and how it could be used. And then we'll uh, wrap up, have some questions that you can ask, start thinking about your questions maybe. And uh, I really want to thank you all for being here, but let's go into the demo real quick. And uh, you can catch me on LinkedIn by the QR code and the link. I'll also, uh, let me go ahead and share now where I'll switch and share to the iSpring Learn setup. Just want to say, Alex, I'm admiring the fact that you managed to both interact uh, with the audience and continue your presentation at the same time, which is um, basically making me uh, jobless here, but that's all right. I always enjoy when uh, somebody is able to juggle different things at the same time. So uh, oh. just kudos to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a while. <laughs> All right, so I am now here. When you see me, you will see two views of iSpring Learn. There is, of course, you know, this wouldn't be the full setup, obviously, everything you need, because it would be best if you have something customized. But we'll show you the learner experience, which is this tab. And then the dashboard experience, the administrator side experience, right? So let's start with the administrator side and sort of like the skills or let's say the tools that you have to really be able to deliver the social learning aspects and strategies we were talking about. So if you're going to set up a sort of like a group of a community of practice or set up groups that are going to share specific knowledge. One thing that you can go into is the knowledge base and take advantage of the knowledge base, right? So the knowledge base can be classified by different groups, by different folders per se, right? And those group and those folders can contain that content. So let's say if you're interested in AI video generation, 
then you can have a nice link to a guy that's really nice doing AI videos lately. I don't know who that is. Uh, I don't know, maybe. Yeah. So <laughs> could that be? I don't know. Shameless plug, shameless plug. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> the Corpraxis channel, that's where I'm at. But if, uh, let's say, you want to share specific knowledge, maybe it doesn't need to be in a folder and you want to know, hey, how can we, how can our teams develop learning objectives and that specifically be tied to, you know, kind of in some areas, not specifically tied to Blue's taxonomy? Oh, wait, there's a, there's a knowledge here from, Magger's uh, behavioral objectives. Cool. Here's a link to the book. Let me go check it out. So again, knowledge space is a great way to share knowledge and do that in an organized way. You can set it up by folders and you can then uh, provide that content to specific groups of users or have it publicly available. Now, when it comes to the learner view of that, right? From the learner perspective, then you want to look at Okay, I completed my course, or I'm here looking at my course. Cool. You know, I can click on this. When I look at that, there, there's an outline. There's information about the course. There are reviews, of course. That's more for the team. But there is questions and answers, questions and responses, specifically to that content, to that course uh, content and topic. So if there was further discussion that needed to be had. This is something that can be available for users, uh, your learners, and you know, have your experts in the field answer the questions for the people that designed the course, be able to interact with the learners and provide that. And this is, can be beneficial in both areas, right? So remember that if we look at the original formats of, of instructional systems design, you want to have not only evaluations of how well the learning did, uh, the, of the training did, but specifically, how can you improve it? How can you improve the process by which you created that course? So in that specific thing, uh, this would be great because to provide you some insights, uh, there might be questions that reveal blind spots that perhaps you miss uh, as a design team. So very important there. So that is the knowledge base, but the component that it's also available is questions and answers. And from an administrative perspective, I'm going to switch back to administrative side, right? So this is what the administrator will see. You can go into um, the, uh, where am I? Course questions. Here we go. So we got knowledge base, course questions. So in course questions, there is that one course where someone put the question, right? And as an administrator, and as someone that has this access, I can see, okay, they asked that question, cool. And what was the response? Oh, it was that. All right, awesome. And so there are controls there to deal with that. So those mechanisms are great. They provide communication uh, to and fro. It could be a one-on-one -on -one or one-to-many, and there's also communication that can happen, um, you know, uh, from communicating with the instructor. Aside from that, you know, that I can see that it's interesting as well is uh, the ability, you know, often in corporate learning, you'll find this scenario, right? Where you have, um, you have your group uh, working together. There are some doubts that took the scores, but are not doing this thing well. Well, this on the job training module is very interesting, the way they approach this on iSpring. So the fact that you can set up a session real quick, um, you know, you will, this happens all the time anyway, right? It happens in, in companies, but the problem with that is that it happens and nobody, you can't catch it. You can't report on it. It's not logged. So this is a great way to kind of break down a specific task. Let's say in this case, the floor sales representative task checklist, and then say, you know what, let's have this conversation. Let's have the session right now. Let's go into it, get on a zoom call, do a session. And, but it's, it's logged, so you can see then it could give you a good insight into performance down the road. So that is it for me. I would love to address any questions that you may have. And uh, again, I want to thank iSpring, Chris, and everybody else, April, for uh, bringing me on. And uh, yeah, I see already a question in the chat, but I'm going to let Chris do her job. You know, I don't, uh, but I can sing too. 
<laughs> That's all right, Alex. I feel totally fine about if you wish to read the question yourself, but wouldn't we be promoting collaboration as, as models in the concept of social learning if we have a dialogue? Don't you think that would be better? Absolutely. We can model that. <laughs> right? So um, Audrey's asking, how can the L&D team um, create a proof of concept for social learning? Okay. Yeah. So that's a, that's a very, that's an excellent question, specifically because when you think about the proof of concept, it's going to be critical that it's going to help you share something, something that people can actually see, right? Something that people can actually experience rather than just throwing an idea out there. This happens a lot in companies. I've done this. I've been in companies. You share the idea and then it's like, whoops, flat. And then nobody sees it. Nobody cares. So how to do that? Well, the main thing is, I'll say, if you, in your current LMS, do what you need to do in your current LMS. But let's say your current LMS does not provide that capability, and you don't really have access to a lot of technology you can bring. You know, the last thing that your company leaders want to hear is that you want to spend more money, right? So if you can find, if your LMS does not do the thing, obviously, get a free trial of something like, I sprint learn or an LMS that enables this type of technologies and then do a quick sample of the interactions that can happen and how they can happen. That is to give you an, a, a, the, let's say, license to do a, a quick pilot, right? And you should have a good um, set of a plan that you want to set up with this, right? Mm -hmm. So, hey, look, it's going to be six months. We're going to engage these two groups of people. It's about 20 people. And we're going to have them share this and this and that. And then we're going to gather feedback through surveys or gather feedback through focus groups as mm -hmm. to what that experience looks like. And it's something that we can use. And right. that give you a much better case than just saying, hey, this is my idea. Don't shoot it down. <laughs> yeah. Right. We do have another minute for a super quick question from a user, Sake of Destiny. And um, at my own moderators uh, will, I would also add up a, a little bit on top of that. The question says, um, how can you encourage shy learners to participate in social learning? And I would add, how can you participate the representatives of cultures that don't feel comfortable opening up much or observing their weak connections to participate in social learning? Because this is often the case for American teams, at least. When somebody comes from Southeast Asia, they are much less open to social learning in a new uh, American environment. Yeah, so I mean, you know, one thing you had to understand that this is not going to be a turn the lights on and we're, we're, we're in here. Um, this is going to be work, it's behavior change. So regardless of the case, you know, if it's a shy learner, if it's uh, someone that you know, is not, not my thing, that's not what we do. Well, you have a company culture, right? You have sort of like a workplace culture. And that doesn't mean, you know, what you do, you're not, I would like to think that you're not exactly yourself at work all the time, like a hundred percent. There's some of you in there, but you're not, you know, it's, we're in the workplace and we have a specific culture. So yeah, it has to be, you know, share from the top and from the bottom. And the idea is to provide opportunities that are consistent, right? So those focus that those principles that we talked about in social learning, right. people need to see you, observe you, right? Doing the thing. Oh, this is a thing. We're doing this now. Cool. And you have to, you know, allow them to imitate, to copy, to not feel ashamed, to not feel, you know, left out. Right. And so it takes, it takes quite a bit of time and it's something that will happen slowly, but it will happen. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. I'm sure it would be great if you stay with us for a little longer and uh, maybe also participate in our chat discussion. And um, I'll say thank you and see you soon at other Ice Spring events. <laughs> well, thank you so much, everybody. Have a great one. And uh, Raymond, I, I see your question. I'll address it in the chat. Great. Thanks.